All right, let's start off uh, with the bevel arc brush. And just to make sure everybody can follow along, I'm gonna start so super simple. Uh, go in here to our brush palette, grab the cube 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, and uh, I'm good to go. Now I'm gonna give myself a little bit of geometry to work with. So first let's take our startup material and switch over to skin shader four. Uh, turn on polyframe so we can see the polyframe here. And if I go into geometry, when I hit divide to get more geometry, you're gonna see it's gonna average the vertices. I'm gonna undo that. And I wanna keep these corners nice and sharp for this demonstration. So I'm gonna go over here, turn off the smooth modifier and then divide this up until we're up to about, you know, half a million polygons or so. So bevel arc brush. So if we go in here to, uh, let's go ahead and turn our polyframe off. If I hit B to bring up the brush menu and then B again to narrow it down to just the brushes that start with B. You can see we have two new additions, bevel arc and bevel flat. So if you hit BBA or you just click bevel arc, that'll give you the bevel arc brush. And the basics of how this brush works is super simple. You click on one side of a mesh, you click on and drag over to the other side of the mesh. And then as you drag back and forth, it's going to create a bevel arc for you. Now you're gonna see while I'm doing this, I'm having to really go in there and brush a lot. Uh, we can alleviate some of that work by just tapping S on the keyboard and cranking up that draw size or going up here to the top and just giving yourself a nice big draw size. So again, uh, click and drag across here and then those two points are gonna determine uh, the width or the radius of that bevel, I should say. Uh, so it's not your brush size that determines that. Um, again, it's where you click first, where you click second, and it's gonna bridge those two uh, into an arc. And it can work on any type of geometry, just to be clear. You're gonna see we have six, we have a subdivision geometry here. It's literally just pushing those polygons uh, into that arc shape. If you didn't have subdivisions, you delete lower and you, you just have geometry sitting here, no problem, bevel it into an arc. If it was a Dynamesh, you can go in here and say, you know, turn on Dynamesh, so now we got a Dynamesh mesh, go across here, no problem. In fact, if you wanna use Sculptures Pro, turn on Sculptures Pro here, and I'll turn on Polygon so you can see it. Uh, if you go and click an arc in here, you can use Sculptures Pro. And that's that adaptive updating geometry on the fly that's happening. You can use uh, that with this, uh, again, no problem at all. So let's go ahead and undo back to where we just had our subdivision cube here. Uh, we'll turn off Sculptures Pro and it also works in symmetry. So if we turn on X symmetry here, uh, if we turn on our floor here, here's Z forward, we're symmetrical across the X axis. Again, click on either side, go into bevel arc. You can go into transform, we can do X and Y symmetry. Again, just go across here and you can see how quickly you can go and generate uh, a rounded shape. Now I did say, uh, let's go and turn on polyframe here. I did say, and we'll turn off X symmetry. I did say that um, the radius is determined by where you click first and drag to the second point. It's also determined by, if you go over here to brush modifiers, there's a uh, brush modifier in the modifier submenu. Uh, and that is gonna affect how this works. So to demonstrate this scientifically, we're gonna go in here to polyframe. We're gonna go down here to subdivision level one. And uh, in my Z modeler brush, BZM, if I hold down alt and paint, over these faces here, I can go ahead and mark them. And I'm gonna use these to determine, you know, how far apart I'm clicking. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, uh, paint over there, and then I'm gonna let go of Alt and just tap, get some new poly groups going. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back up in my subdivisions, and now you're gonna see I have uh, basically a visual reference. We'll go ahead and turn off the line option in the poly groups, or uh, the poly frame option. So again, we're gonna go to BBA for our bevel arc brush, make a nice big brush size, just tap S on your keyboard, drag that up. And now with bevel arc and the modifier brush open, so it's set to 50, which is the default. I'm gonna click on one corner and then click on the other corner, just staying within the green. And then I'm just gonna bevel this backwards. And we're gonna see if I go uh, to the side here, that is again, clicking green to green, that's a radius of 50 uh, with the brush modifier. If I crank that up to 100, we'll go ahead and do this one. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna green to green and we're just gonna go down the entire length there. And you can see that's the result using a radius of 100. If I drop this down to say 25, we'll go again green to green. This is a result of 25 and let's go even lower, let's say 10. So you're gonna see, even though we're clicking on the exact same spots, relatively speaking, it's giving us a different result. So we've got 50, 100, 25, and 10. And in fact, if we go to a negative number, let's say negative 100, and we click on one side and then the other, boom, we now have a flat bevel. So if we hit BBF, that's bevel flat, and you're gonna see all the bevel flat brushes is bevel arc with the brush modifier set to negative 100. And now you're able to go through here and just do a big flat bevel. And uh, you can mix and match these too. So if we go back to BBA, uh, we'll set this modifier back to 50, which is the default. 
you can go now you know we've got a we've got a flat bevel on here we're going to go down across here and we'll just add a little rounded bevel here and then maybe we'll have a real rounded bevel up here as well so again we've added a flat bevel and then rounded off the corners just quickly using those bevel brushes now let's go back to our subdivision uh, level six we'll just go ahead and hit Control w make it all one poly group here we'll turn off our floor and uh, so, so speaking of bevel flat we're going to put a big flat bevel on here uh, like so and we're just going to go oops we're in bevel arc bbf big brush size go through here and just chop in a bevel flat now in our history we're going to get more in depth into like these polygroup options i just want to bring it up here because it's useful to me anyways uh, if we go down here to polygroup you can go over here and say polygroup group changed points so if you change those bevel points um, and again it was it was square and then it went to a bevel and then if you it, it's going to look at that difference for the last stroke you did and you can polygroup the difference so you can pop this piece off you can duplicate this thing turn it into you know something you can extract and make new geometry out of and cut stuff in armor and all that good stuff no problem in fact it gets a little bit more involved and again i'm skipping ahead a little bit but i i think you'll want to know about it now you can go through here and you can bevel this one and you can bevel this one and you can bevel this one and of course, if you go, oh, I want to grab all those, the polygroup, all those bevels. Well, if you go to group change points, it's going to grab the last one. However, if you go back in your history to where nothing was changed, control tap that point in history, go all the way forward and then say group change points. It's going to grab all of them. There's some more options in there for you to kind of play around with. I just wanted to throw it out there now rather than later. But again, if you want more of that, skip ahead to the uh, polygroup and masking uh, change. You can actually, same thing in masking. Uh, mask change points as well. Anyways, speaking of masking, let's go ahead and I'm gonna hold down control and then uh, control alt and I'm gonna unmask this area in here. And then I'm gonna go to BF, F, oops, sorry, BBF for our bevel flat brush. And you're gonna see when I use this brush now, again, it's going to respect masking. So as long as you have something masked and you wanna just pop a bevel in there, uh, no problem. Go to this side, we'll say mask this part off, control tap to invert it. And we'll just can put a little bevel flat in there. Now, the cool thing about this is if I go back to my arc BBA, we have bevel arc here, it'll actually skip over that bevel. So if I say, you know what, I wanna put a little arc in here, you can start arcing and then just keep brushing and it'll just jump past that gap there and give you a cut in and then uh, also a bevel arc. And again, you can use symmetry. You can go to this side and put a bevel arc this direction. You can hit BBF to go to bevel flat and you can you know flatten out this side if you want to so again super cool super easy to go through here using dynamesh or dynamically uh, subdivided objects or it even kind of works well on low res objects if i go back down here to just a plain old cube and say subdiv and subdiv level one we'll turn our lines back on uh, even if you go through here like here to here and use the bevel flat it'll do a pretty good job you know so you can use or bevel arc bba you can go through here and be like even on low res geo works pretty pretty good you know it gives you a nice consistent uh, little radius there so feel free to use that on a ton of geometry or sculptors pro dynamesh or uh, even low res geo now if you have let's go in here to our uh, clay build up brush uh just b c b for clay build up you can go through here and you can kind of dig in and then go through here and kind of pull out you can still bevel across here so we go b b f for bevel flat again pick a side pick a side Shoop, you can just flatten straight across here. In fact, if we go back to where we had this mass, so control alt and then do another bevel flat. So there's our bevel flat results. Uh, you can actually go through here and you can say, you know what, let's continue beveling flat. So I'm gonna go across this time and then I can just continue just beveling flat, just taking that surface here and using this to kind of push the rest of this geo uh, out to just have myself a, a nice flat bevel across here. So I'll undo that here. And in fact, if we, you know, click across here, so we're gonna grab these two surfaces, then hold down Alt, that'll actually pull up to that surface. So you can kind of uh, use this to bevel in and uh, bevel out. So we'll click here, click here, start beveling, and then hold down Alt, and you can use this to kind of unbevel, I suppose. Uh, very similar if we did a BPL, your planar brush, uh, you can do kind of the same thing. You can kind of go through here and then hold down Alt with the planar brush and kind of pull up uh, to that surface, but you can also use uh, the bevel flat to do that as well. Now I am gonna skip ahead just a little bit here. So uh, let's drop down 
You know what? Let's go to subdivision level one. Uh, let's undo so we just have a plain old cube. Go down to subdivision level one. Say delete higher. And now again, we just have a plain old cube. And I'm going to make this geometry a little bit nicer. So if I have X symmetry turned on, so we're symmetrical across the X axis. And in fact, uh, just the X axis, we'll say. We can go in here to zero measure. I'm going to say detect edges. Uh, zero mesh half, adaptive size down to zero. That'll give us nice even quads, drop the resolution down. And now we just have nice clean organized geometry that's symmetrical across the x-axis. And it went ahead and creased my edges for me. So now instead of having to turn the smooth modifier off, I can turn that back on and then just hit control D and it'll keep my corners nice and sharp. So uh, now that I have this geometry, I can turn polyframe off and I'm gonna skip ahead, like I said, just a little bit. Hold down control shift. We're gonna go in here to knife curve and we're gonna chop through. So this is way better than trim brush. So I can hold down control shift, drag out a curve, alt tap twice, and we're just gonna kind of cut a shape uh, through here. Oops, hit delete lower to get rid of the geometry so we can use the knife curve brush. So we're going to cut through here, alt tapping twice again, and we're just going to start creating a little bit of a shape here. So let's say this is our new shape. And in fact, let's uh, squeeze this down a little bit so I don't have to go so far over when I'm doing my bevels. Now, if I go to BBA for a bevel arc brush, uh, again, we've sliced through here, we've changed the geometry, we've got nice uh, clean cuts around here. So if I go across here, uh, you're going to see we get a nice bevel arc. However, if I go through here and bevel, it's going to be like, give me a weird result. So on interior surfaces or concave surfaces, you're going to go through here. And instead of just dragging across and brushing, drag across and then hold down alt and brush. Now you're going to see if it starts pulling through the mesh, because again, we're dealing with very large brushes and very thin meshes in this instance. I'm going to hold down control alt or masking so control alt and mask and that's going to unmask just this area and that'll go ahead and protect this area so when i you know click here to click here and then hold down alt it'll protect any of the other geometry and now i can get convex and then concave uh, rounded surfaces so here we are rounding it out rounding it out we'll round this one out too and now we're getting into areas and even in these areas sometimes if you do a very large brush radius you'll start pushing into these areas here so again you can just mask this to protect it Give yourself a nice rounded radius. And then on again, on these interior edges here, hold down Alt and pull across. And that'll pull this into a nice uh, interior arc. And then you can keep doing the convex uh, arcs as needed.